Hey yo, what up peeps? You got Justin here and you are tuned in to my latest video. So I'm gonna call these, this is gonna be uh, part one of a series called the Hotel Rants with Justin. It's gonna be my hotel rants. Cause I'm sitting in a hotel right now by myself in BC. Uh, don't have anyone to, to chill with, uh, don't really have anything to do, and uh, but as long as I got my camera, I always got someone to talk to. Today, I'm going to talk about my views on like the trappings of life. Material goods, clothes, cars, money, uh, well money, the things that money can buy. Uh, like they say money can't buy happiness. And you know what? Poverty doesn't make you happy either. There's people that live with nothing and they're happy as hell. Like. Do it, they're totally positive, optimistic, whatever, and uh, they don't have a thing. And when they do, they give it away. And uh, and there's other people, lots of cash, that just can't find happiness. And I've been on both ends of that spectrum. And uh, and like I mean, I came from a family. I came from a family. My dad worked his ass off his whole life, and uh, to make sure that we could, we never went without, and we never did. And and. Uh, yeah, and like I mean, all the problems that I had in my life, like with, uh, ro like being being in the hood, drinking mouthwash, different things like that. I that was never the plan for a person that came from a home like I came from. But uh, but you know what? I did it to myself because I had to learn. And when I when I got clean and sober the first time, I uh, I worked my ass off. And my dad taught me how to work. He, t he, the work ethic I have today is a gift from my dad, and I'm eternally grateful for that, because uh, my dad's a hard worker, and he taught me how to make money, and he helped me make money, and he taught me how to save money, and I was going to, I was going to NA meetings, I was going to AA meetings, um, and and like as my, as my clean time got longer and longer, work became the priority, and the meetings kind of got hit the back burner. And, uh, and that was the first thing, that was the first sign of uh, me going into relapse mode because the recovery thing wasn't a big priority anymore. I thought I had it licked. But, uh, but in that time, and, and I wasn't reaching out either. I wasn't hanging out with people anymore, like people in the program and stuff. And uh, in that time, I had a lot of cars. And I don't even really talk about it because most people wouldn't even believe me. But I had two Corvettes at the same time. I've had brand new cars, like I've had all kinds of cars. But at the end of the day, when I would be driving around in one of my cars, it was always just me by myself. I'd be listening to tunes, driving around. There's no, never anybody in the passenger seat. And that's when I realized that money, like, I'm, I mean, I was so unhappy before, like leading up to when I relapsed, that uh, it just, the money, the work thing, like, it was just like, what's the point? Like, I mean, I was eating at the Friendship Inn in Saskatoon, the soup kitchen, like lots of times, day after day, shooting up with puddle water, hanging out with people that, uh, like the bottom of the barrel. And they're good people. I'm not saying anything bad about those people because I was one of those people too. But I went from that end to driving around in a brand new uh, Pontiac Solstice. It was a lottery car. Uh, that was one in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan and the dealership that I worked for they got a call saying that oh this person would like to sell this car or whatever do you want to bid it like do you want to put a number on it and we'll offer them a price and if they accept then we'll sell the car to you so uh, so the business that I worked for we placed a, a number on it like we said we'll pay this much for it if the customer wants to sell it and they said yes so I went to Prince Albert with one of my coworkers. I drove that car home because I bought it. I paid cash money for it, like no, no loan from the bank, no nothing. As I was driving out of town on the billboard on the side of the highway, it was the advertisement for the lottery, advertising you could win that car. And I was driving away in it. I just paid cash for it. And you know what? That was a fucking awesome feeling. It was a great feeling. But in the ending, like I said, I was driving that car around alone. And it's like, I want a girlfriend. I want someone in my life to share this stuff with. But I was so focused on work and focused on making money that it never came. And uh, yeah, and then, so when I relapsed, I relapsed and uh, like, and then it changed everything. Because then it was like, well, I used to have all this shit. I used to have nice stuff. I used to, like, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to figure out but uh 
with with this recent relapse that I went up, went through, I had over two years sober, and uh, I decided to drink. And uh, my material things, my relationship broke up. Uh, she ended up moving out of province. She took uh, she took the kids. It was I'm not bashing her at all. It was she had no choice. She had to. I'm I was just drunk, right? And uh, and I'm not a nice drunk at all. But uh, yeah, and then I was left. Like I ended up moving, getting a place in Saskatoon, uh, a different place, in a brand new neighborhood, brand new building, brand new everything. I had money, I had my computers, I had my cameras, I had my internet, and it's like, here I am again. Like I mean, I have the money to drink, but uh, I don't have anybody in my life to share it with. And like, not that I, I'm getting sidetracked. Where I'm going with this is appreciate the people in your life. Because you can't, you can buy, you can buy people, but they're not authentic people. Like when you got money, there's people around buying drinks in the bar, whatever. A uh, beautiful girl in your life, but you need to have that money to keep her around. You, so, you know what? The relationships in your life, your family, those real friends that you can see once a year, once every six months, and it's like you never spent any time apart. Those are the most important things in life. The things that can't be bought. The things that can't be bought with money. The most important things in life are not things. They're people. They're love. It's like all those times that I fell in love and broke my heart. Like my heart was broken. You know what? I still have those memories of love. And I have the, the heartbreak too. But they shape me as a human being. So from this day forward, I want to build relationships. And I want to hang on to those things. And I want to make money too. But it's not going to be my 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 sole focus. My sole focus is not going to be making money. My sole focus is going to be to help others and to build relationships with people and keep those relationships and uh, and just live a life full of love, love for others and love for myself. Peace.